Okay, so welcome to part one uh, of this tutorial series. Um, I've blanked all of the code, removed all of the code, I should say, uh, PHP code even, um, from the um, files, all the files. So at the moment, as you can probably tell, this does basically nothing when you search. Um, so it's a simple HTML form. If I just search for tutorial again, spelled wrong. Oh, maybe not. Uh, well, tutorials, remove the S. I see we get no results. This is doing absolutely nothing to do with MySQL or anything like that. Um, so in this part, what I'm going to do is explain the sort of file layout that we're going to be using, and then I'm going to get on with the code. I will briefly mention the database, um, but like I said before, we're not going to be explaining the full database structure because this tutorial is not about something that has a specific structure. So you could use this search method to search for basically anything. Um, so there's no specific database structure that goes with it. Okay, so moving on to the file structure then first. Um, this is the folder that we're working with. So this is the search post page that you just saw. Um, as usual, we have this core folder. In there, there is an init.inc.php file. Uh, and I've said this about a thousand times, well, I've said this a hundred and no, how many tutorials I've got. I was going to say 114, that's my number of videos. Um, so this <laughs> init file, get back on track. Um, basically sets up the system, uh, so this will be included by all of the, all of the pages, and anything that needs to be done on all pages uh, should go in this file. So if you find yourself like copying and pasting code across lots of different pages, um, you should stop doing that and put it in this init file instead, because that's the point of this file. Uh, and then we have this ink folder. This folder will contain all of the files which like provide. Uh, which like sorry, uh, which will provide uh, functions um, and sort of backend type logicy stuff, um, and then those functions are going to be used by our front end page in a moment. So that's basically it for the file structure. So I'll just go back up to our sort of root folder here and move on to the database. So I've got PHP my admin open um, in my other tab here. So I just go to that now. This is the uh, table that we're going to be working with. Um, we're not going to be using the comments table at all. Um, that was mentioned in the, um, like it was a quite a key part of the blog tutorial. Um, but that's not used in this video at all. Um, I'm just literally using this database, this table, sorry, um, to, well, this database and this table to demonstrate the search system. Um, so this is basically the list of posts that were previously, that was previously displayed on the blog. Um, so we have like post title and post body, and they are the two fields that we're going to be searching. And we're basically going to be ignoring the post user, the post date, and the post ID. Um, obviously, if you were to use this system on your site, you would probably use these a bit more. So you could display the user, the time of the post. In fact, ordering by the post date would be a sort of a quite simple way to show the most, um, well, what we think is the most useful result to the user first, because. I don't know, I'm not sure why they'd want the newest thing, it just seems like something that you should do. <laughs> um, post ID is what's sort of default used for order. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's basically it. So this is the database. Um, if you want to understand a little bit more about it, then watch my blog tutorial. So going back to our um, actual search page, um, I will just br very briefly talk about the HTML form, which isn't something that I normally do, but can't hurt, <laughs> I guess. So going to our code, which I have open here, um, just notice quickly before I get started on the form, um, we have these three files. So this file here is the uh, uh, file from the ink folder. If I just go to that, you can see that it's currently completely empty, as is the init file I mentioned, and the search post file just contains this sort of simple HTML template. So um, we just have a simple title here and then the form. And the form submits to the current page, an empty action attribute, means the current URL. And it's using the get method, which means that um, what we enter in the form will appear in the URL. And I'm pretty sure you noticed that in the um, previous part, and I'll just point out in a moment as well. Um, we have two inputs inside this form. One of them is a type text, which is just a simple text input, this thing here. And the other one is a type um, submit which just looks like a button, but when you click it, it will submit the form, um, which you saw on the, um, you saw here, just a search set by the value attribute. So that's basically it for the um, 
well for this just rearrange my windows sorry <laughs> so what we're going to do now is get on and start coding so we first thing we're going to do is code the init file because that is fairly straightforward not much to explain here so in this init file um, the first thing we need to do that we're going to want on all of the pages in this case it's just one page but I want to always use the same structure because it's sort of a good practice kind of thing um, and also it should make my videos a little bit easier to understand if I always do basically the same thing so the first thing we want to do in the init file is connect to the database and we do that using the mysql connect function this function takes three parameters the first one is the server address which is just that for me and the second one is the um, username which is example user for me obviously yours would be different and finally we have example pass which is just the password which again would be different for you uh, the next thing we need to do after that is tell MySQL which database we want to use and we do that using the MySQL select DB function this just takes one parameter which is the name of the database and if we just go back to PHP my admin briefly you can see that the name of this database was just blog so let's just fill that in blog easy um, after that what we want to do is get the full server path to the current folder uh, I've talked about this before so I'm not going to go into too much detail but the way to do it is just to use the dir name function and what this does is returns um, the folder name well this basically you give it a file path and it returns the folder portion of that file path um, and the file path we're going to be giving it is the file constant um, just to quickly point out that these here is two underscores not just one so I've highlighted one there, this is two um, and this constant just contains the full um, full, 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 what I'm saying, the full path to the current script so it'll contain the full server path to this init file so it, it'd end in init.inc.php um, and we're just applying dir name we get the path to the current folder that this script is in and obviously at the moment this is just doing it, wasting time doing this for no reason and um, so we need to store this in a variable so we're going to do core path equals that. And that's that done. So now if we just come down another line, we can use this core path variable in our include line to include the backend file. Um, so this is this blog uh, blog post .inc .php file. Um, at the moment it's currently blank, as I've probably showed you. Um, so we're going to just be including it, and that's where we're going to define our function that will perform the actual search. So here we're just going to do include core path and, and then after the core path we just want a slash because the dir name function will strip the trailing slash uh, well it won't no it won't strip it it will um, it won't return a path that has a slash at the end trailing slash so from the core folder we want the ink folder and then the name of the file which is blog not blog not bog blog with an l blog posts.inc.php which I believe is the name of the file that I used in the original blog tutorial if not then it doesn't really matter does it uh, well <laughs> why am I asking uh, it doesn't really matter um, the principle is still here um, I didn't want to use the original file because it had loads of other functions to do with posting in it I didn't want to sort of over complicate the code more than I had to so that's it for our init file so next thing we need to do is use it in our pages so if we go to our uh, search posts page, and we're just at the top here, um, we're just going to include the init file. So another include, and this is going to be core slash init dot inc dot php. Because do you remember um, from the folder um, structure bit that I did, relative to this search posts page, the init file is in the core folder. Simple. So, going back to our browser and hitting a reload, we don't get any errors, which is good. That means that we've connected the database successfully and that all of our files have been included as needed. So going back to the code now, what we're going to do is create the, um, well, we're going to move on to the um, sort of backend blog post file and we're going to create the um, function that's actually going to search the posts. So we're going to call this function search posts 
this function is going to take one parameter and that's going to be the term that the user enters the actual query the full string um, and because we're dealing with um, MySQL here we need to make sure that our data is secure and all that good stuff uh, to prevent people performing SQL injection attacks and again I've got a video on that so if you're not sure what I'm talking about you should probably go and watch that um, because there are a couple of things you probably need to be aware of just randomly doing a MySQL real ooh, typing real escape string will not just make you protected there's a bit more to it but anyway we're escaping the term not, not the trem the term that the user enters um, and what we want to do now is split this term up into keywords so what we're going to do is use the um, explode function so we're going to do explode Oops. and we're going to be exploding on a space like so and we're going to uh, store the result of this function in a new variable called keywords like so um, and I've got a video on explode and implode the fu two functions two very useful functions even I think is what the video was called, I can't really remember um, so if, if you're not really sure what explode does either go to php.net slash explode or watch my video on it completely up to you um, how you do that so what we can do now is just to test this add a print underscore r of key words like so oops there we go and what this will do is just print out the um, keywords array because the explode function will return an array it will basically split this string up into chunks that are separated by spaces and then it will print out the results in, um, in like a formatted way that sort of people can read so to actually get to, uh, to be able to test this we need to have a um, somewhere that calls this function so going back to our going back to our <laughs> search posts page if I can learn to speak um, we just need to in this block here uh, check that the uh, form has been submitted and if it has we're going to call the search posts function so what we're going to do is use the empty function so we're going to do if empty get term equals false so effectively this means if the uh, term is not empty we're going to do something and that something is going to be uh, called the search oops, posts function and we're going to pass in the get term parameter so the get term parameter just corresponds to the um, term that appears up here in the URL so we have term equals tutorial so in our code this underscore get term will just be equal to tutorial so if I just load our page well if I just, yeah if I just reload the page now you can see we get array zero tutorial and what this means is that we have an array which is what the array means and the elements are there's one one element the zeroth element if you like and it's uh, the tutorial um, value but if I just type in a few more keywords so if I do um, Ooh, think of something uh, this is something hit enter you can see we get this is something as three separate elements in the array now there is a little bit of a problem here because if someone were to type in like multiple spaces by mistake or as a way to get all of the data um, it will add an empty element so say if I were to do this is space space something hit enter you can see we get this empty one here and we want to prevent that because the empty keyword is basically meaningless um, we only want to search the things that they enter instead of either a mistake or them trying to do something that they shouldn't so instead of using explode which splits all of the um, well there are two ways we could do this we could explode it on a space and get all of the elements like this and then uh, loop through this array removing the empty ones or we could split on like the most white space um, if that makes sense I'm going to do that using a regular expression and it'll become a little bit more clear in a moment so hopefully um, that makes sense but what I mean is say if we had that string a moment ago uh, which was this is something with two spaces there and all spelled wrong um, 
what we could do is have it split on two spaces here because there are two spaces here or one space here because there's one here if there were loads here and like a few more here it would split on loads here and a few here so that's what I meant by the most I didn't mean that it always split on loads um, so hopefully that made well it didn't make any sense but hopefully you understood what I meant so oh, actually I'll just do that search and you can see the sort of problem because it gets ridiculous there are loads and lo loads of empty ones and you end up with more empty ones than you have actual keywords so what we're going to do is go back to our code our blog post backend file and replace explode with preg underscore split not plit, split and what this will do is basically the same as the explode function except instead of taking just a character as the first parameter it takes a regular expression um, so the regular expression that we're going to be, going to be providing is basically this so slash s which means spaces and plus which means more than one um, I'm not going to be going into much well I haven't gone into much detail about uh, regular expression syntax there's plenty of info on the internet on that um, and I don't want to sort of pollute this searching tutorial with a load of nonsense about regular expressions nobody understands them anyway so I wouldn't really want to try and explain it anyway if we go back to our page and hit reload you can see that all the spaces have been removed um, so now we just have the keywords so this is something which is what we entered so that's basically that little bit there and I'm going to end this here because it's gone way over 15 minutes luckily I can do that now um, so yeah thanks for watching and join me in at part whatever comes next, 2, 2 comes next 1, 2, yep <laughs> um, so join me in part 2 where we will actually create the search functionality instead of just going on about keywords for at least 10 minutes Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in part two.